month, the final episode of Marriage. This yes. was an absolute roller coaster for me, this episode. <laughs> I mean, I think people will be shocked to hear any episode of Marriage has been a roller coaster. Well, and it wasn't necessarily a roller coaster for all the right reasons. We've been on a journey with this. We have. Because a lot of your comments underneath go from expert, brilliance, genius, you know, profound, uh, breath of fresh air to ghastly, awful, boring. I've not known a drama polarise people quite so much. Well, we've had that journey from the first episode, Uptown, yeah. Uptown, Uptown. Um, my, my analysis... Overall analysis? Were you doing, are you doing like in charades? The whole thing? The whole thing, yeah. I want to go back to what I said on the Monday that you... That I then changed my mind with, well, with the first episode. That I then changed my mind when you said you gave me the re a good argument as to why it couldn't happen. And after the first half of episode, I said it's almost like if I was this whoever wrote this person, pers whoever wrote this partner, I would have said cut everybody else up. Right. Tell us the story via these two people. And you, I can't remember what you said, but I did agree with you in the end. But now I've gone back to that because. I got to the point where I was going to my phone every time there was anybody else on the screen. Mm. And I was only living for the moments mm. between these two extraordinary actors. Because actually, when you drill into the writing and you drill into the direction, it's not good. what do we have? I think it's because none of the other scenes, none of the other actors, none of the nothing else worked. Which means for me that Nicola Walker and Sean Bean did something extraordinary. Mm. It was, we're actually going to do a How to Stay Married podcast off the back of it because it was so interesting for us watching the marriage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From, in terms of subject, but can I just say, as a, just as a note on that, I, I, think, I think this was spec, a friend of mine, Rachel, was asking me what I thought of it. And I said, I stand by the idea that I think it's television and program makers' responsibility and commissioners' responsibility to sometimes mix up the way in which stuff is made, mm. the formatting devices, the structures of drama, the subjects of, of drama, the way in which dramas are approached. I think it's really incumbent on all of our broadcasters and filmmakers and, and, and uh, you know, streamers and everything to sometimes deliver stuff that comes at a different pace, is, is done in a different way, is perhaps underwritten and all this kind of thing. I think that's really important because I think we, like fast food, we get into habitual viewing habits that we can't undo and we can't un, un, you know, shake ourselves free of. And I think for me, at its best, at times, I was giving this the benefit of the doubt and saying, this is, this is a challenge. This is a challenge to conventional drama. This is a challenge to those narratives that are racing at you. And I think when it works, and it, as you rightly say, it works best when just those two actors are- Only worked. It only worked when they're Sean Bean and Nicola Walker were on screen, just them together. It did exactly that. But it's a stretch to go from even that to saying it was because of brilliant writing necessarily. Because no, there was no brilliant no, writing. No. It was two brilliant actors who brought who brought a skeleton script to life. Yeah. By the work that they did, the business that they did around it. I mean, yeah. we were talking about you know those all the bits all the way through it where they just burst into spontaneous. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, they it's put that. Hang on a minute. They put that fucking discordant music over a beautiful scene at the beginning where they were roaring with laughter. Step to the side. In the whole, in step to the right. Oh, step oh to that the, makes we, me want to hit you. We were actually turning down the volume when that came up because but, it was pissing us off. But so there was much. that beautiful moment as that was playing. We mm -hmm. muted it, and Sean Bean and her were roaring with laughter. It was a beautiful moment in the supermarket, and you've got step to the right, step to the left. Fuck off, I don't want to step nowhere. Yeah, this episode kept going off into little scenes that we didn't need. I didn't need to see the boss going to his psychotherapist. Well, on that what point, the hell was that about? On that point, that scene, you see, what you're looking for in these things is consistency and certainly in direction or what have you. That scene, I can't even begin to understand why they kept that scene in. It was brilliantly acted by the father of the girl that the boss had slept with. I thought he was very and good. And I liked the way it went, it, it, yeah. it went counterintuitive, counterintuitive and just had a, him really calmly saying... That was amazing. I can only imagine that that scene, it was, what was, uh, you know what I wonder might have happened with this? Perhaps much more of it was just Nicola uh, Walker and Sean Bean, and they lost the courage of their convictions. They so perhaps wanted to build it out. Seeds. Let's give a bit yeah. more characterization to other characters in this. Is it a tough ask for people just to, uh, there was a scene at the end where they were in bed together, where they, the final scene, the final scene. So and I said to Nadia, marriage. it was a joy, it was it, marriage. It, it, but it was five minutes marriage. wasn't it, at the end. And I said, I could have watched an entire hour of them getting ready for bed. That's why I keep saying it needs to be just the two of them. I agree, I agree. I mean, no, but my argument about what, 
you need other things in their life. Other things, it would be unrealistic if you had a couple unfettered or buffeted by anyone no, else in their life. There moments outside that marriage. Yeah, but I wanted the claustrophobia of being in the marriage, I agree, but I think in the, the house. I didn't want to go to people's other yes. people's houses and yes. get it. It was just all just... No, um, I agree. I agree. I think what they needed to do in the kind of setting up of this stylistically was they, they, what I would have maybe done. This is what I would have done. I would have said, this is a series of four films of four intimate moments in a marriage. One would be in bed, getting ready for bed, and you would hear of all the other characters. You would That's get a second. Another one would be, clear, you know, filling the dishwasher. Yeah. I mean, I have to say, Sean, Sean Bean has made an art of filling a dishwasher. With, and speaking volumes about his emotional... Uh, his emotional state of mind this and is, where he's at. This is what I felt after episode one. I changed my mind and now having watched it all, I go back to that. Yeah. And that's a really good way to put it. You have moments of a marriage, four big... And really gone into it. Because yeah. when we were really it. in their marriage, oh, it's brilliant. it was fascinating. fascinating. Yeah. I, and I loved... Now, don't forget that laughter between the two of them is yeah. what they have created. Yeah. Maybe with the help of the director, I don't know. But uh, I said to Mark last night, imagine this series without the laughter, that that mm. that um, tool that they had mm. throughout the series. Because you could go from them having like such a heartbreaking moment or that awful silence that can happen in marriage when they're not talking mm. to each other. And then this bubble of laughter would mm. come. A couple of moments. And it really yeah. saved what, what, where it could have just totally fallen out, oh, the bottom of it could have fallen out. But there were some moments there which needed directorial help. For example, the moment where the daughter pushes Nicola Walker into the memories of losing a child. Oh, dear and Lord. there was nothing real about that scene because even if you despised the woman opposite you, and she didn't, it was her mum, there was no help given to the character from the daughter. It was so unrealistic she, she, how she was no, so still it wasn't and disengaged. Even like she was frozen, disengaged. It was just like nothing was happening. Nothing was happening. I would have got the director, the director, I've been, I've said, do, do, do that, that again. And he said, maybe you want to, how do you feel? Do you feel like you would want to move towards? If we yeah. don't want you to, but, we want you still. Yeah. There seemed like there was no conversation there really to bring odd. something else really out yeah. of the actress. Now, and so I didn't believe it. No, I didn't. And yet Nicola Walker sat there and acted her fucking arse off. Socks she was off. brilliant again. And Nicola Walker, another high moment for me was Nicola Walker just giving her boss a dressing down. Oh how disappointed she was in him taking drugs. That was brilliant. That was, that was sensational. She was brilliant mm. at that point. I love that. Um, and the scene that completely Achilles healed me, of course, was that moment uh, where Sean Bean asks his daughter or suggests to his daughter that she read the letter that he'd written. God, it, I was crying. It, 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 we were was, both crying. it was... I, it was like, a, I don't know, it touched me on so many levels, if I think about it in too much detail now. And I think of Sean Bean and I think of that that tender confusion of being a man who wants to make the right decisions but doesn't have, you know, doesn't necessarily... I get it all the time now, especially as all the girls get older, not knowing exactly how to. But he has that sort of thing where he's been kind of, yeah, silent, yeah, can't got say that. stuff. Yeah, a yeah, daughter yeah. or a son that's yeah. going to totally flip out mm. if you in any way try and mm. approach a subject. And he didn't know, like, even if I could hug you if you want me to. Yeah, yeah. He'd lost his confidence yes, as a father. Totally. And therefore, and she was judging him more and more, and that distance that had come between them, I think, will resonate for so many so parents. Many parents so, many so, so I personally, I think as a show, I think there is there are two sensational performances at the centre of it. I think what's happening in a lot of the criticism and sort of adulation that's being uh, thrown at it is that we are in I think we're we're breathing life into something that actually isn't there I think there is a little bit of Emperor's New Clothes around the fact that actually it could have been written better I think it needed to be a, the structure could have been different I think they got distracted with subsidiary characters that weren't strong I think they had the truth they had the strength in just the two actors and I think I don't particularly think the script was up to much either. You know, like when you've got, when you're reading a really good book, and then just a character pops up, and then it just disappears, and you're mm. not, and it's just like a bit frustrating because it because it mm. interrupted the. I felt a bit like that with it, or the, it's like, oh god, mm. who's this, mm. and why are we going in here? Yeah. You should never think that. No, you shouldn't. You, shouldn't. you really should never think that. And I have never watched anything where I thought that as much as I did with this series. Yeah. So we've at times thought, we it, was, like we've thought oh, it was inspired. Oh, now what's this? I know. Where are we going now? Why are we here? Yeah. We were like, literally, <laughs> why are we here? This is just not adding anything to anything yet. So I think a bit of both. Some of the best, some of the worst in different ways.